Today we will be discussing the United States versus Deborah Madden case. This case is noteworthy because it deals with ethical dilemmas and we will also be discussing on ways to address these issues and how to incorporate different techniques or beliefs in order to address them. The ethical issue faced in this particular case was that Deborah Madden was deliberately tampering with evidence. She would skim portions of cocaine and keep them. She would go into coworkers' lockers and take out bags of, or their samples of cocaine and also take portions of them home. She would manage the, the, the time long in order to be the only analyst working at night, leaving her a lot of access to different types of um, evidence. Hundreds of cases were dismissed because of her evidence mistampering. And the real ethical issue that arises here is how is the public to trust forensic science, particularly in the drug um, discipline, the drug analysis discipline, when there are people like Deborah tampering with this evidence and really not upholding the integrity of their job. So how do we stay ahead of this, of these issues, of these trends? The issue being dealt with here, as mentioned before, was the evidence mishandling. In Deborah's case, it came to be because she had become depressed. She started abusing alcohol and the alcohol just led to more depression. So she started taking cocaine because some, a component within cocaine is dopamine and dopamine gives you this sense of happiness. So she started becoming addicted to that. What can be done? Attending seminars in order to become aware of what the workload is going to be like in a real world setting is key because it allows you to network with other people. It allows you to learn different techniques that may make your job a little bit easier. And it allows you to know that there are other people like you that feel the exact same way. Another thing um, to do in order to address this is be aware of cumulative fatigue. As researcher Cohen mentions in his article, it is when you reach a point of mental and physical fatigueness where you're, no, you're so exhausted that you're no longer really doing the work. You're essentially just going through the motions and not really in it. So it's important to be aware of this so you know that your capacity and your limits and you don't exceed that so you don't become so overwhelmed that you start making silly mistakes. Dealing with personal values. It is essential to learn not to internalize the cases dealt with. This is particularly um, difficult for me because I come from a very family oriented background. So we're all very knit tight. And it's hard to see when there are like child neglect cases and th things of that nature because you don't quite understand how another individual could put somebody through abuse or, or, or you see really, really horrendous things and it just makes it difficult to deal with. But a strategy to do to overcome this barrier, especially for me, would be to know that my job will make a difference in that case, that my, my work can be a determining factor in whether that person goes free or not. So being able to analyze but not internalize and sympathize and not internalize would be a way to overcome this, this barrier. Another key value is remaining an integral person. For me, integrity means everything. And that derives from my faith. I believe that there is a higher being and that he continuously sees me all the time. So he sees if I'm doing something wrong and he sees if I'm doing something right. So my standard is held a little bit higher for that reason because there's somebody constantly watching me and this just helps as um, motivation to do, to do my work well. So how do we how do we empathize with or sympathize with the public? In the Deborah Madden case, because of her, many guilty individuals were set free and they were now allowed to commingle with um, the community. And this is a scary a, a scary thought because these people are drug traffickers and a lot of violence follows drug trafficking. It's not something that is just 
an easy an easy road out. It's something that can lead to a lot of violence and if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time because of the wrong people, you can really get hurt. So knowing this, knowing that your work can cause something like this should be fuel or should be motivation to refrain from being the analyst that caused other people to remain free and that allows the public to restore faith in what you're doing, to restore faith in, in your work. So applying your faith in forensics, faith doesn't have to be strictly in religion. It could be faith in your work, faith in other people, or faith in, um, in your religious beliefs. It doesn't have to be limited to that, but that definitely is part of it. As mentioned in, the, in an article written by Patent Maker, faith gives people this sense of self-worth and the self-worth helps motivate you to do your job and do it well because now you are becoming a fundamental um, component in determining the outcome of something bigger than you are so whether it is in people or in trusting that you're doing your job right and that this can be a determining factor in somebody else's life definitely creates a sense of security and allows you to hold yourself to a higher standard because you know that you matter. Stress in this job is inevitable. You are given a lot of cases to work. Um, you have to analyze everything by a certain deadline. You're seeing things that you wish you didn't see, but unfortunately are out there. So how do you deal with that? You want to, as mentioned before, you want to know your limits. You want to know how much you can take. You don't want to tell your boss you can work 600 cases when you can only really work 400. Like you want to limit your, um, you want to know your capacity. Also, that being said with the things that you may or may not see in forensics, um, you want to find that good support system that you can come home to and talk about it. And then once you're done talking, that's it. That's the end of it. You don't want to internalize every single case because then that will create an imbalance in your own life. So making sure that you address these things and as said before, going to seminars and finding new and innovative techniques to use to make your job easier can definitely help with um, dealing with the stress of how am I gonna do this? Am I gonna have enough time to get it done? So just being aware of those options and speaking out if you're, um, laboratory has resources, take advantage of those resources and use them if you need counseling or things of that nature.